Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video. Well, we're finally into the cold weather. I think most of North America, uh, upper United States, and certainly into Canada, Western Canada, has been getting hit with the proverbial early winter storms. And winter came in for us charging hard and fast at the beginning of November, and it hasn't really let up since. So uh, I figured I'd take this opportunity to do some advisory videos just to us in the industry that are spraying and to you the end recipients keep your eyes out for problems and the one problem that we encountered on a job site uh, was some disbonding and the foam was actually popping off the stud and popping off the plywood now if you uh, were to watch this video of us spraying right here right now you'd say wow looks clean looks dry and you're right visually the plywood is dry but we are spraying in a minus three degrees Celsius environment. So it's a structure, it's a wood structure, it's a shop going up, spraying roof or spraying walls. And the heat is on, we're warming the structure up, but the air temperature and surface temperature hasn't come up just yet. So we're into a sub freezing situation. So like uh, 28 Fahrenheit or uh, 29 Fahrenheit, somewhere in that range for Canadians, we're like minus two, minus three. Now we've got cold formulations, Huntsman, BSF, they've all got foams that'll go sub-freezing. But here is the caution. People ask me, what's the temperature that you can spray to? Can we spray closed cell foam when it's cold out? Absolutely, have done it. But here's the, here's the problem. We have what appears to be a very clean, dry plywood substrate. You can see that the building has got a wrap on it and those walls don't look wet at all and in fact the foam when you're spraying it looks like it's going on just great but about 20 minutes after as the foam starts to cool and it contracts naturally because it goes on warm as it's contracting we're starting to hear tick tick pop pop snap snap and then you come over and you see oh here it is disbonding from the stud and then sure enough despawning from the substrate when you wrapped it with your hand there was a light hollow sound to it boom boom there's some tiny bit of movement like okay instant failure so what's causing it well it's a surface contaminant right is it a chemistry issue no not really the first thing going is that you have got a small amount of moisture uh, in at the substrate and it's causing enough of a problem to interfere with the adhesion and you say well didn't look like it you know I took a look at it and it looked dry it felt dry I agree but if you are in situations where you've had late season concrete pours so uh, they poured the floor in cooler weather you've had multiple uh, rainy days slushy days freezing uh, rain cycles and if you have a building that got wrapped late so it stayed with plywood or OSB or the exterior was open to the elements then they finally wrapped it late or maybe still not at all you can get into a situation where the wood the studs and the plywood or the OSB have absorbed quite a bit of moisture and then that moisture has frozen when you go sub-zero it's frozen into the wood so think of it like this the moisture content of the wood is no longer 17 18 19 percent it's maybe 20 25 30 percent it's it's absorbed an enormous amount of moisture and it's holding it in the actual fibers of the wood and that's what was going on here we had high moisture content in the actual lumber and then it was you know in a frozen state so it didn't look wet didn't feel wet there was no obvious surface moisture so how do you fix this problem? Well, I told the client, we can't spray anymore until we get this rectified, and the only way to rectify it is with heat. So you get your big Bertha uh, indirect fired heaters uh, fired up. You can use direct fire too, depending on where you want to place them. But I suggest that you get the heat on inside the structure and bake the structure for a good day or so. And just let the walls warm up, get some air moving, uh, have it uh, 15, 16, 20 degrees Celsius, so get it 70, 72 Fahrenheit or warmer. Let it bake, let it dry out. And when we did that on this structure, we started to see little drips of water coming out where the 2x6 and the plywood sheeting met. And that proved exactly what I had been thinking, that there was trapped moisture in the seams, trapped moisture in the joints, trapped moisture. It was just under the surface. And as soon as that warm air started to hit it, 
it released it it was able to come out and we dried it up now coincidentally uh, the roofs generally don't have a problem like the roof was shingled early on so the ceiling sections that we sprayed they were all fine the foam stuck just fine didn't have to do any remediation there at all but in this situation where the walls were especially on the north side of the building where it was in the shade uh, yeah, the, the foam that had disbonded, we just grabbed it, pulled it out. It wasn't really staying in there very well. Folks, you, you really can't leave this kind of stuff in when you know about it. Um, you could say, well, can't spray drones, can we just go around with some can foam, can foam it into the cracks? I advise not, okay? It's a failure on adhesion. There's going to be a bit of a space uh, between the back of the spray foam and the substrate. And you don't want water to be collecting in that space and rotting out the wall from the outside inward. Uh, you can control moisture getting into it from in to out by can forming it and sealing it, maybe, probably. But you don't want to let exterior water from failed siding or, or compromised uh, building wrap getting into that space and then causing a problem. So what do you do about it? Just grab onto it. It's going to pull out. Use a few simple hand tools. Pull the foam out. Throw it down on the ground. You know, that's going into the garbage can. Put a fan to it, put the heat to it, dry out the stud bay. By then, all the moisture has been wicked out of it and it's been removed. And then you can respray the thing in and it will bond and be a proper adhesive job. This was just a small couple of corners. We realized it within, you know, 100, 110 square feet that, hey, it's cooling down and it's disbonding. Now, what physically is going on to explain it to you people technically? Um, the foam, the hot foam is uh, coming in contact with the plywood plywood has moisture uh, that heat that warm foam is releasing melting the water that's trapped inside the wood that water is then reacting with the isocyanates to uh, create actual co2 it's it's a gas and then what that's doing is it's that impeding and interfering with the adhesion to the substrate so at a very critical time while the chemical the foam is wanting to chemically and physically bond up there's this light gas that's being created that's puff, puff, puffing it off the substrate. So it actually compromises the adhesion so it doesn't have very good adhesion. And then as the foam contracts when it cools, which is normal, it doesn't have enough uh, adhesion to the substrate. And then you hear the foam actually physically releasing. Pop, tink, tuck. Now, a little quick crack of the foam when it's cooling down is normal. Uh, that's not to cause alarm, but anybody that's been around foam that's not, that's releasing and it's having an adhesion problem, it's a very distinct sound. And then when you go by after, start pounding on it, you can start to see, hey, this is hollow, hollow. I actually showed this to the building owner, the homeowner, and said, hey, these are all failures in here. This is what we're going to do about it. We're going to dig it out. We're going to bake it and we're going to warm it up. So when you are going into cold weather climate jobs now now that we're in cold weather climate warm them up folks i know that the stats on the cold weather foam are that it can be sprayed in in freezing temperatures i know that but you're not going to know until it starts to fail whether you have a compromised adhesion problem and it's very common people said well the guy was out and he sprayed it when it was fairly cold and now it's not sticking well chances are there was frost there was frozen moisture there was high moisture content in the wood or whatever on the surface and they didn't realize it so warm the structures up dry them out and then go back and spray you can readjust the heat you don't have to have summer heat inside there all the time i know you got your cold weather formulations warm it up temporarily to dry it out then cool it back down so you can get it within parameters to spray and have a nice pattern and then you're caulking and then do your final air seal package and your cleanup you'll have a good job that'll last you know multi-generation so here's a tip for you for all the guys spraying and all the people that are receiving the end product Share, like, subscribe, leave a comment on the video. Adhesion is important. Get things warmed up. Catch you on a new one.